the human, the super soldiers, I'd imagine. Or at least that's left of them. The weight of her words settled over the team, and they allowed the horror of it to soak in for a breath before it became just another fact of the mission for Ares. They were human. So what? Nothing, humans or otherwise, were going to stand in their way. Their bullets bit into flesh just the same. State your purpose! Raptor barked at the mutated man, his voice reverberating off the cave walls. The mutated man emitted only that terrible, bird-like sound again. Aegis realized with a shudder that it was laughing. Then the mutant spoke, the words strangely round and hollow on his tongue. You shouldn't have come here. It is ours now. No one leaves. Raptor's voice was low and dangerous. Identify yourself, or we're going to put you down. First, there was that warbling laugh, followed by words. Identify? We're soldiers, tools, weapons just like all of you, broken, left to rot. Is that identity enough? As he spoke, more mutants began emerging from the shadows. Five of them, just like she had counted. Bodies in various states of disfigurement. Some wore body armor that she recognized as the same that Volga soldiers wore. Cut and restitched to fit the mutants' bodies. Others had pieces of sheet metal secured over their vital areas. Bulging arms, missing eyes, twisted legs, and in one case, translucent skin. All of them were suffering. Suffering, but not stupid, with intelligence shining in sharp gazes, both hungry and angry. Aegis swallowed her horror and slipped into the part of her that could be cold, calculated, and deadly. She knew the drill. Umbral would prefer these people alive, but would begrudgingly accept them dead. It all depended on what happened in the next few seconds as she watched the scene unfold down the sights of her rifle. If you surrender, we can take you out of here, Sentinel said. But all of Ares could feel the tension in the air. Test subjects for experimentation were always preferred alive, but there would be no surrender when violence was coiling off their adversaries like smoke into the sky. Leave. No. The leader laughed. You think this is just some mission we can walk away from? No. You won't be leaving either. Pray. Sentinel wasted no time shouting, ENGAGE, as the mutants began their charge. The bark of gunfire filled the cavern as Ares unleashed their weapons on the mutants. It wasn't the first time they had fired on humans, nor would it be the last. These deaths would all just add to the weight of the burden they carried for Umbral, because of Umbral. They needed their research data, and access to the thermal plant, and so it didn't matter if the person resisting them wielded bullet, blade, claw, or tooth. Not in the long run. Above them, Hawkeye tracked their adversaries, squeezing off a single, booming shot that took a tall, willowy mutant in the chest. It stumbled, but didn't fall, eyes burning with rage. The leader swung his huge, sinewy arms at Raptor like a battering ram. The sergeant dodged, and the pillar that he had been using as cover was obliterated by the strength of the mutant. Through gritted teeth, he called out, Damn! These things are strong! Things... We are... Not things! The leader yelled as he regained his balance. Don't let them get close, or we'll be done before we start, Sentinel ordered. The team opened fire 
bullets slamming into the mutants who seemed more intent on reaching them than protecting themselves. They began to swarm Ares, but the team was sharper than they must have expected, more streamlined. They knew one another, worked well together, and they didn't miss. The mutant leader lunged at Aegis, who sidestepped the attack and spun to face him, drawing her combat knife and plunging it into the meat of his shoulder. He howled and wheeled, ripping the blade from her grasp, but she drew her pistol and shot him twice in the chest, knocking him down. Tempest was on him in an instant, delivering a kick that broke the mutant's nose. He scrambled backwards, a snarl on his face as his features contorted into something even more horrifying. Tempest gave him no quarter. Her more advanced blade clutched in her hand, and mutant blood flowed. Aegis turned her attention to the others. Jester had ducked behind a half wall, waiting for the right moment before bursting out, grenade launcher booming when enough space opened. Exo engaged one, delivering a punch that broke its neck with a sickening crack. Sentinel shot another in the sternum, and when it stumbled, Raptor disarmed it and slammed the mutant into a pillar so hard the stone crumbled. Aegis holstered her pistol, switching to the rifle again, and took aim at the next mutant who barreled towards her. The rifle barked, and the mutant went down. It fell, twitching, but did not get back up. She swung around, looking for the last one. Her eyes widened as she saw him charging towards Tempest's blind side. She opened her mouth to shout a warning, but Sentinel was already there, tackling the mutant before he could reach her. He slammed the mutant's head into the ground once, twice, three times, until its unnaturally thick skull finally cracked and blood flowed onto the stone. The blood was as red as her own. Aegis, who at one point in her life had sworn an oath to never do harm, ignored it. Sentinel got to his feet, brushing dirt off his uniform. Hawkeye, he said into his comms. Report. I have visual on the central hub. There's movement. I think there are more where that came from. Hawkeye replied, his voice slightly distorted through the speaker. Aegis knelt next to one of the downed figures, turning the dead man's head to the side to get a better look. They were undoubtedly human, but twisted and malformed in the strangest ways. My guess is that they're victims of yet another failed super soldier program. But I don't think their mutations were in any way intentional. She waved her hand over the body to demonstrate. There's no pattern, no rhyme or reason to the differences between them. What happened to them was a mistake. And combined with the fact they are already faster and stronger than normal because of experiments. She trailed off. It's bad news, is all. I can't rule out that whatever caused them to mutate isn't contagious, though. It's extremely unlikely. As always, this changes nothing. The mission parameters are clear. Retrieve the data and secure the plant. If we have to put them down, so be it. Raptor replied. He eyed the mutated humans as if they were nothing but an obstacle in their path. We'll do what we need to, as we always do. Aegis collected her samples, and they continued on. She went over the possibilities in her mind as they marched. These people may have lived down here for nearly a decade, but she didn't think they were reproducing. With a facility as big as Crater Station, though, who knows how many soldiers, volunteers, and unwilling victims Volga experimented on before the facility fell to ruin. What did the people down here eat? There was water and electricity, but food? And what happened to the workers? The answer, of course, was obvious. And when she combined those questions with the clear mental degradation affecting some of the mutants, Aegis had a full-body shiver run through her. Everything okay? Tempest asked, noticing her reaction. 
Aegis shook her head. I don't know. Tempest, are you familiar with a disease called Kuru? The sounds of people moving around them had Sentinel on edge, but not once did the mutants break their cover and attack. He wasn't going to force a conflict if he didn't need to. Aegis had her samples, and now they just needed Exo to retrieve the research data and secure the thermal energy plant. Problem was, how could they secure the plant if there was an untold amount of adversaries creeping through the shadows? He had an idea, but it was going to be a damned mess even if they pulled it off without a hitch. Still, it was the best he had at the moment. He called Jester up to walk next to him. It's about to be your time to shine, Corporal. Oh, don't I know it. Jester chuckled, patting the oversized pack he had brought just for this mission. What did you have in mind, sir? I want to do this quickly which means we need a way to incapacitate as many of these mutants as possible in one fell swoop. Jester leaned in, and even though Sentinel couldn't see his face past his dark visor, he knew the other man was grinning wickedly. I'm listening. Sentinel ordered everybody to switch to comms so that their conversations would be more private and they could speak quieter amongst each other. Having seen how intelligent the mutants still were, this was an appropriate precaution. He outlined the plan for the demolition expert. They would need to lure the mutants all into a single area, one of the still intact buildings, and blow the entire thing up around them, burying them in rubble. With Crater Station being so much larger than expected, luring them all to one point would be next to impossible. But if he could split the team in three and have three separate distractions, the split parts of the team could then lure the mutants to where they wanted them. Chester's grin widened when he heard Sentinel's plan. That's going to be a whole lot of bang for our buck. If all goes to plan, you're not wrong. Can you do it? Oh, definitely. I brought enough C4 to flatten a small mountain. With the decision made, he stopped Ares and they reviewed the plan again and again while they rested for a moment and drank from their canteens. There was still one major hiccup in the plan. How to get everyone to safety before the explosion. But that was where Hawkeye came in. He looked up at the sniper. I need you to cover Jester and keep the mutants off his tail while he sets the charges. Once the charges are set, he'll need your help to find a safe place to detonate from since he'll be most vulnerable. Yes, sir. I believe I have a solution for the issue of getting everyone out of the area before the explosion. Exo droned. Everyone will have to be as fast on their feet as possible. But if we can get most of the mutants inside, I can play back some of your voices and the sounds of battle to make them believe their targets are still within the structure. Ideally, Jester can create a hole in the roof before we put the plan into action, and everyone can exit from there so they aren't seen running out at ground level. Most of the buildings are attached to the catwalks from the roof, and everyone can escape to a safe range from there. You're a genius, Exo. You really are. Tempest said. I am designed to be as efficient as possible at my function. I simply calculate the best option at any given time. Okay. But that does leave us with the issue of you getting buried in the rubble along with the mutants, Exo. We can't just blow up the entire building while you're still in it, Jester pointed out. You can, in fact. It would be best if you do, so you can get out of here before any more mutants arrive. I can escape if need be. Okay. How? Aegis asked. My body is made of lightweight, yet highly durable material. It allows me to move in ways no human can, and to withstand incredible impacts. I can survive the explosion as long as my head is intact. I am also capable of digging through such rubble at an accelerated pace, should I need to get myself out of danger. While usually I wouldn't recommend this method 
as it is dangerous to my hardware. It is possible. Sentinel hesitated. On one hand, Exo was an invaluable asset and had been instrumental in helping them accomplish their missions. On the other hand, he was not human and could not feel pain as they could. There were no nerves for him to feel the burn of fire or the crushing pressure of being buried in rubble. There was no risk of dying. All right, he finally said. We'll make sure you get out of there in one piece, but don't do anything stupid. I am incapable of stupidity. He opened his mouth and then closed it again. No need to respond, or they'd be speaking in circles for hours. To the rest of the team, he said, We need to get to the central research hub before we attempt this, so Exo can download all the data we need. Even if he's crushed, the information should be recoverable. Any questions before we continue? Sentinel asked only out of habit, so when the comms crackled and Hawkeye spoke, he was unprepared. Maybe we should reconsider. Letting Exo get buried, I mean. Raptor spoke up first. What do you mean by that? I'm just thinking. Maybe we shouldn't bury him with the mutants. We can detonate the charges early and get him out. I will be fine. Sentinel nodded. You have your orders, Hawkeye. Exo can dig his way out if he needs to, and he can't feel pain anyway. Doesn't mean it's right. Hawkeye sounded agitated. Sentinel was stunned. It was not only the longest conversation he'd had with the sniper in at least a week, it was totally out of character. Do you have any reason to think otherwise? No. Part of him wanted to dig into the mystery of Hawkeye's misplaced, rare burst of energy, but he was already feeling uneasy about the plan as it was, so he left it. Good. Finish drinking, everyone, and let's get this done. The central research hub was located in the heart of Crater Station. It had taken them hours to reach this point. But so far, none of the mutants skulking in the background had tried to attack a second time. They stopped outside the lab's double doors, which were firmly shut. Sentinel pulled Exo aside. I need you to get us in there, and then get to work as quickly as you can. Yes, sir. Exo stepped past him, approaching the doors and placing one metal hand on the panel to the right of the door. The lights flickered, and with a metallic clunk, the door unlocked. Sentinel led the way into the lab, his eyes adjusting to the brighter interior. Rows upon rows of computer banks lined the walls, each humming with electricity. If the computers were still functional after all this time, then there was a chance that Exo could find what they needed without any difficulty. The combat robot went straight to the nearest console, tapping at the screen and opening a series of prompts. His hands flew over the keys, faster than any human could type, and within moments, he had bypassed the security measures and was downloading the data. Raptor stood next to him, on full alert. Exo couldn't be interrupted during the process, or they'd have to start all over. He was vulnerable, so the second-in-command stood guard. Sentinel turned to the rest of the team. Tempest, Jester, keep watch. I don't want any surprises. The two nodded, taking up positions by the door. Sentinel looked at Aegis, jerking his head to the back of the lab where more tools were located. We've got a few minutes, if you want to look over those samples you took. She turned to him, confused. Sentinel, I'm a field doctor, not a genetic engineer. You just seemed worried back there, about what was causing the mutations. When Aegis didn't say anything, Sentinel sighed. He glanced at the rest of the team, who were occupied, and motioned for the medic to follow him to the aforementioned back portion of the lab. He took his helmet off, setting it a few feet away from him on the table, and gestured for her to do the same. Now able to speak quietly and still be heard, Sentinel leaned in. I heard you talking to Tempest. 
I know what Kuru is, but do you really think that's what is going on here? I thought it was all but unheard of anymore. Aegis blinked, surprised, pushing her sweaty hair off her forehead. I don't actually think it's Kuru, but I think it's entirely plausible that the extreme genetic manipulation these people were put through could have increased their chances of spontaneous prion disease. And that into the possibility of that they might have cannibalized the workers during whatever rebellion caused this place to be abandoned. I don't know. Some of them were unstable on their feet, and others were showing clear signs of cognitive decline. It doesn't change what we have to do here, but it's just so obvious to me that there's going to be no end to these issues with any of these super soldier programs. It's none of our concern. I just need to know that it isn't going to spread to us. It's nearly impossible, but oddly, that doesn't make me feel any better. She looked up at him with sad, tired eyes. I'm a doctor, not an exobiologist, not a virologist, and certainly not a geneticist. I don't know what's going on here, and it scares me. She paused considering whether she should say what was on her mind, before adding, It's probably best V leaves the mutants behind, regardless. Dead, I mean. Too much risk in bringing out a live one. It just feels like we're wasting our time. None of these programs have really worked so far. Sentinel sighed. They had faced genetically enhanced soldiers in the field before but there had always been a downfall once Umbral had been able to dig a little deeper. The enhanced fighters they had faced in Svalbard had been examined thoroughly by Umbral, who found that they likely didn't live but a few days after their enhancements. A terrible investment. You're right, but you also know as well as I do that we're not the ones meant to question the morality of all of this. We have our orders. Aegis looked like she wanted to say more, but instead she simply nodded. They returned to the team, who were waiting for Sentinel to give the order. Exo hadn't finished, but Sentinel was anxious to move. <sighs> All right, everyone. We're nearly done here. We'll be taking the quickest route to the geothermal plant. Hawkeye is currently scouting out the best structure for the explosion after that. Raptor turned to the robot. Exo, how much longer? Exo's voice was mechanical and clipped. Estimated time for data transfer. Six minutes, four seconds. Are you using dial-up? Jester groaned. Then, a distant rumble shook the walls. Just slightly. It was faint, but the team was immediately on alert, eyes darting around the room. The comms crackled to life. Hawkeye's voice quiet in concentration. I've got movement. Down the corridor, four o'clock. Something big. The lights flickered as if in time to his words, the floors vibrating once more beneath their feet. Everyone, stay sharp. Raptor, check it out with Tempest. Aegis, you and I stay here with Exo. Jester, take the north hallway. Raptor nodded, motioning for Tempest to follow him. They moved toward the doorway, scanning with their rifles as they stepped into the corridor. Jester disappeared down the north passage to the back of the central hub, the light of his headlamp bobbing as he flicked it on. The room fell into an uneasy silence, broken only by the sound of Exo's data transfer. Suddenly, a clinging noise echoed from the far side of the lab. Aegis spun around her weapon raised as shadows shifted in the corners. Exo, status update. Sentinel gritted through his teeth. Exo's mechanical voice came again, calm but direct. Transfer at 72%. Three minutes remaining. Something's off, Sentinel. Aegis's voice was soft, barely audible, as if she thought they might be overheard. Before Sentinel could respond, a low, inhuman growl echoed from the darkened doorway where Raptor and Tempest had gone. Then a series of thudding footsteps, 
too heavy to be human, reverberated through the floor. Tempest's voice crackled over the comms, her tone sharp. Contact! We've got hostiles! Mutants! Suddenly, a blast rocked the hallway, followed by gunfire and guttural screams. The fight was on. Sentinel cursed under his breath, readying his weapon. Raptor, Tempest, hold your ground. We're coming to assist. But just as they were about to move, something shifted near Exo. Sentinel turned, his eyes narrowing as a hiss of air escaped from a nearby ventilation duct. Aegis! A figure moved, fast. Before either could react, two mutants lunged from the shadows, dropping from the ceiling. Their hulking, twisted forms were grotesque, muscles bulging under their pale, stretched skin. They wore crude metal armor, covering the most vital parts. One of them snarled, its eyes gleaming with intelligence. You've made a mistake coming here. The mutant's voice was low, mocking, as it eyed Exo. It wasn't just an attack, it was a calculated strike. They knew what they wanted. Sentinel swung his rifle towards the intruders, firing off a burst of shots. The rounds hit the closest mutant, but the creature barely flinched, its deformed body absorbing the impact like a sponge. Suddenly, four more mutants burst through the vents, descending upon the trio. The robot's sensors flared to life its free mechanical arm whirring as it fought back with a barrage of bullets. Exo was still attached to the terminal, and the mutants were relentless, their odd forms moving with unnatural speed and agility. Two mutants engaged Sentinel and Aegis. The other two rushed the robot. Exo tried to fend them off, landing several solid blows that sent the two mutants flying across the room. But the others overwhelmed him, their brute strength too much even for the robot. One of the mutants latched onto Exo's back, fingers digging into the metal paneling. Aegis fired at another mutant, her rounds striking its torso, but it shrugged off the bullets like they were nothing. The creature swung at her, knocking her back into a wall. The ones attacking Sentinel and Aegis specifically were relentless, taking injury after injury just to keep them away from Exo. Working in eerie coordination, the mutants ripped Exo free from the terminal, while the others kept Sentinel and Aegis busy. The robot struggled, its servos grinding as it tried to fight back, but sheer strength overwhelmed it. With a powerful yank, they dragged Exo into the shadows of the vent system, his metallic frame scraping against the ground. The rest of the mutants followed, retreating into the darkness with their prize. Sentinel rushed towards the vent, cursing under his breath as he heard Exo's metal body clang and grind against the ductwork. Exo! Exo's mechanical voice came through the comms, strained and staticky. I cannot break free. I... The rest was just noise. For just a second, just a blip of time, Sentinel remembered the helplessness of cold water closing over his head. He didn't take his eyes off the vent as he called the rest of the team. Everyone returned to me. They ambushed us. Managed to take Exo. Sentinel's mind was running at a million miles an hour as he tried to piece together the next steps. Exo had the data, and they had to get him back, even if it added time to the mission objectives. They also needed Exo to accomplish the explosion plan. Without the robot, Sentinel, Aegis said, but he ignored her. His next steps for Ares needed to be streamlined. Perfect or Sentinel. This time her voice was higher, a note of panic in it. He whipped around, intending on telling her to hold on, but his words died in his throat as he took in the scene. Jester, Tempest, and Raptor had returned. Aegis was holding the latter's right arm where the fabric of Raptor's uniform had been torn away. A bite mark, made from human teeth, stood out angrily on his dark skin. 
The teeth had broken through in two places, and blood dripped down to the floor. Aegis had pushed her visor up and pulled the fabric mask down, eyes wild. Their earlier conversation hit him like a runaway train, and for a second, all thoughts of Exo left his mind. We've... we've got a problem, his medic breathed. 